Hey guys, in this series, we'll be understanding WebAssembly concepts, memory, shared memory, atomics, etc. We will be using assembly script, simple reason being that it's familiar to TypeScript. It creates simple WASM files without too much noise. Just to compare, this is a WASM file of an assembly script code. So we are having a function which returns us an addition of the two numbers. And this is the WASM file we get. Simple enough for us to read and understand and to understand the basic concepts of WebAssembly. Whereas this is a WASM file of an M scripting code. So we have written this in C++, including stdio and then returning zero inside the main function. And its WASM file is full of noise, full of unnecessary data that we don't want to get involved into since we are beginning with WebAssembly. So let's start off now. Hey guys, let's start off by setting up assembly script first. So I'll follow the steps and do npm init, present it to everything. And then the next step is to install assembly script. And then I'll just initialize an assembly script project. So we have all this code here. I'll remove some of this code to reduce the noise in our project. And that's it. So we have this index.ts file, it's an assembly script file and we have asconfig which is similar to tsconfig that we have to help us with the assembly script compilation and that's it. Let's see how to create a wasm file now. Okay, so let's create a wasm file now. So I'll copy this command that I've written here and I'll paste it here, but I'll update it a bit. So firstly, I need to specify the file that I want to create it as a wasm file. So what I'll simply do is I'll provide the path, which is assembly slash index.ts and for out file, I'll simply provide path, which is let's say wasm and then add dot wasm. And this optimize is an optional flag. If you want to add, you can add it just optimizes the compilation. I'll press enter. Uh, it says not found. I need to add npx here. And yeah, you have a wasm file here and we have other stuff as well, like RJS and other stuff. I'll remove this and we'll simply focus on add.wasm file. Let's move on to loading the wasm file into the web application. So let's create a simple index.html file here. Uh, outside, I'll create index.html html5 and then I'll simply say web I'll create a button on its click event I'll load the wasm file load wasm okay and the next step is to add a script so I'll create main.js file and I'll create an object where we will have load wasm function. Okay, I hope it's correct. Okay, wasm function. Okay, and I'll add it to global this to wasm let me inject this file as well script type i would choose module and then src would be main.js okay so let's see the steps now so to load a wasm file we need to perform three steps first one is to fetch the wasm file and we'll simply use jsfetch function that we have inbuilt. Let's start off by fetching the wasm file. So fetching wasm. I'll make it as async and I'll provide the path as well. Const response is equal to fetch. and then path. I'll await for the response and then I'll simply return response dot array buffer. Cool. 
okay okay so what is this array buffer so whenever you are fetching a particular file from the server the response would always have array buffer array buffer is nothing but a byte array where each entry inside that array represents 8 bit data let me show you with an example first so i'll create a random file and i'll add data to it data data and some random text and then, then i'll fetch this file i'll provide the relative path and then i'll console log the buffer okay with live server and yeah so you can see I have got an array buffer here so it has 26 entries inside it where each entry is equivalent to 8 bit data so next part is to how to read this array buffer so since it's a simple string data we can just use text decoder so I'll create a text decoder here text decoder and I'll simply decode the data of buffer and let me console log it directly okay so I'm loading the random file I have received the buffer I initialize the text decoder and I got the data that was there present inside this file so all in all whenever you're trying to fetch a file the response would always have array buffer and then you can decode the text if it's a simple file using text decoder or else if it's a wasm file we'll see what to do now okay so let's fetch a wasm file now and see what we receive so instead of random.txt I'll fetch a wasm file which is present inside a wasm folder and the file's name is add.wasm and let me console log the buffer okay <clears throat> let's debug it as well I clicked here so I received a buffer uh, it has 89 entries inside it and we have received the array buffer so whether you fetch a wasm file or a text file or any kind of file you'll always receive array buffer first things first now the second part to load the wasm into web application is to compile it so we use text decoder to decode a simple text that is that was present inside the random.txt file but to decode the wasm file javascript has provided us webassembly module we can simply compile let me create a new function async function it'll receive a buffer and module so js has given us webassembly module here and we can simply do compile here the bytes that we received so we received a buffer and we'll compile it uh, compile wasm pass in buffer and it returns a promise so i'll simply return this and let's console log module here and see what we receive uh, I'll click on this button we fetch the buffer we've received the data we compile the wasm file and we received a module so what is this module it imports nothing we'll get back to it but it exports two things one is add the function that we declared inside the typescript file the assembly script file and second thing is the memory we'll get back to the memory but let's see what this prototype is so prototype is nothing that it says that this particular module is of type webassembly dot module so we've done with two steps loading the wasm file 
using fetch compiling it the next step is to instantiate it so let's instantiate it now and instantiate wasm async function it will receive a module and we will reuse WebAssembly module to instantiate it. We'll pass in module and we'll pass in empty empty object here. We'll see in the next videos what this empty object is. But for now, this is it. So let's get the instance. This dot instantiate wasm awesome, and I'll pass it module. And let me console log the instance. Okay, load wasm bytes. We receive the module, and we receive the instance as well. So we have a lot of things here. We have firstly an exports object, which exports two things. One is add, and another one is memory. If you see in the module, it exports two types. One is function, and second one is memory kind. And we have these two exported types inside the export object the next thing is the prototype it's a WebAssembly module and we have other things here as well but let's just focus on the exports object so I'll just store this as global variable <coughs> and I'll simply call this function 1 to 3 1 to 3 and it returns us 246 if you want to see what is inside the wasm file it will be present here double click on it and let's see what's there so it is a module here WebAssembly module we have a memory here declared it exports that memory with the default value of 0 then we have a function here and then that function is exported as add and then it takes in two arguments first one is of integer type second one as well returns a result of integer type fetches both the variables and then returns it returns their addition to be precise so this is a wasm file that we just loaded and this is how you load a simple wasm file inside a web application fetch it pass the buffer to the compilation phase and then the module needs to be instantiated and then you are done you can just use the instance as you want so since we already know that array buffer is just a byte array so every block represents one byte we can actually store a wasm file inside a javascript project as well so instead of fetching it uh, let me show you i'll console log the buffer and let me load it so i have this buffer here so i'll simply copy this object and i'll paste it uh, not here i'll store it as global variable and i'll create an array so we have this byte array with us so i'll simply copy this and instead of fetching a wasm file I'll create an int data array. And I'll pass in the data that I just copied. So we have this whole data, the byte array. And I'm not fetching a wasm file. And let's see if we are able to instantiate the wasm file correctly or not. So we have the data updated. I'll click on this button. Uh, I'll add a debugger first. So we have a buffer that was there. And we received a module. We instantiated it. And you can see we have received the add and memory as well. So I'll store this at global variable dot add 345 345 and we receive the addition so this is the magic of WebAssembly. it just returns us an array buffer a byte array and it does wonders we can work with it we can hard code it we can instantiate it 
and then allow it to do all the heavy lifting that we want. See you in the next video guys.